All right, so Jonah, this is... I'm actually interested Ooh. in this because the trailer looks sweet. It makes it look like really dark. And I'm just waiting for a story that pulls me into Destiny because I'm, I'm, a, I'm big on story when it comes to games. And both Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 so, so far, like the story's just like... Like, I just like, I'm just like, why? Why were you building up to this nothing? It's the same thing where I was going to say, especially with Destiny 2, where you had this bad guy, you thought he was going to be badass, and then, like, at the end, like, he was just, the boss battle was just, like, ridiculously stupid. Yeah. So, um, I, I think I compared it to Super Shredder at the end of Ninja Turtles 2, when he just ends up killing himself by throwing, like, having a dock fall on him instead mm -hmm. of, like, the turtles fighting him. That's kind of how I felt. And not that you don't get to fight him, but it was just, like, he becomes this crazy powerful thing, and then you just beat him anyway. Something stupid like that. Anyway, talk about this, Jonah, because I have no idea what this is. So this is the physical versions of, of Forsaken, which has finally been announced, because up until this point, we've only been able to pre-order the digital versions of Forsaken. Uh, and the one on the left is just the standard version. So it comes with Forsaken, the the base game, the expansions one and two. So uh, you're probably fine with that. But I, <clears throat> the 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 great me, has decided <laughs> to go to GameStop and pre-order the one on the right, which is ninety nine dollars. Never <laughs> open that. I'm telling you, never open. If GameStop goes under, which it probably will, or whatever happens to it. Don't open that. That'll probably be worth something one day. Now you're just just putting con conflicting thoughts into my head. Yeah, don't I have to buy. I buy like the digital version as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay. So there's uh, so this one. Well, here's a question. Yeah. Now I don't mean to cut you off, but I did ask you this off camera. But I want it now official. Is this an actual game, like a game box with a physical game, or is it just a digital code? So. Uh, I don't know yet, but the way they've done it in the past, like the Taken King, was you got a physical disc that the only thing it had on it was the base game. Mm -hmm. And then you got codes for the expansions. Yeah, that's how I bought Destiny 1 three times, I think. <laughs> Something so, like that. <laughs> so if, it's, if it holds true to history, the disc has nothing but the first the, the first version of the game. I wish I, I wish it's not true. I wish that's not the case. Because it'd be cool to have like a physical disc with an actual uh, updated version of the game in it. Yeah. But uh, if it if it holds true to the precedent, then yeah, it'll just be the base game with mm -hmm. the DLC being separate. Yeah. Um, I'm actually interested. Like I said, I'm interested to see what this is all about. Hopefully, it's got a good story to it. I, I know they think with Destiny, it's more or less about the the raids and the group events stuff like that. But I don't know. I'm just I just want a story to go with it. Like if if you had a game. Like a Destiny game with a really amazing first person, not a first person, but like an actual like campaign story, and then you added all this cool stuff to the, to it. Then I think you make a really good game. Um, but I feel like they they think about what they can do for the community after the fact of just kind of like coming up with a quick campaign. But uh, for for this in this case, a lot of the promotional stuff. Is uh, for the campaign. Is for the campaign. You're getting a lot of stuff that's pretty. Uh, that actually brings back a lot of the uh, the lore bits from that we've we've known about for a long time, like how the Queen's brother is going to come back mm -hmm. and he's going to be a major antagonist. We've known about that for a long time. The statue looks like that. My uh, avatar from the first Destiny game. It's Kate Six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the exo. That's the exo. The exo body. Yeah, he's. He's uh he's have you seen the trailer for the Forsaken? Yeah, yeah, that's what that I'm I'm getting excited for. Yeah, because it actually looks sweet. It's like mm. dark and Cage Six is dead and <laughs> yeah, neat things. Although they did say that the way he dies in the trailer is not the way he dies in the story, because that's just well, then that's then just then like signif <laughs> that's just to signify that he's going to die, and that's and that that's like the tone that's setting for the game, the story or something. But the, how he dies in the campaign will be different. And I think that it better be awesome, or and, that's uh, it's you lost me. And I think that the actually I think the streamers and like the YouTubers, the big YouTubers, have played the mission that he dies in. They say that it's really good. How did they get their hands? Because on? they because Bungie the streamers. Bungie likes them better. They're they're walking and talking campaigns. Exactly. It's like hey, 
play this bottle of water. Why? Because it's it's just stupidly fun. Exactly. 10,000 plus people are going to buy that bottle of water. Bungie, sponsor us. Let us play your games. Yeah, I'll tell people. I like your game. I know lots of people. Even when it's bad, I liked your game. <laughs> so, there's Forsaken. That's, I'm, I'm just very curious about that. So, and also... There we go. Dragon Quest XI. There's the one game I know is going to be good because it's a Dragon Quest game and it looks hype as hell. What are you most excited about this one? Being the 11th in the series. Which started on the Super Nintendo. Well, I never played the Super Nintendo versions. The first one I played was Dragon Quest Eight for a PS2 when I was young. And then I got the 3DS, 3DS version of Eight, And I have the DS version of 9. Did it start on Super Nintendo? I want to say Oh, yes. I think NES. There was like... There was NES, Dragon Warrior. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was Dragon Warrior. I take NES. that back. My apologies, world. Yeah. Uh, it just... Uh, it just looks really nice. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like I I get really into the Dragon Quest uh, mechanics, the battle, and like the enemy enemies are all really interesting looking. Mm-hmm. They're not all just hulking beasts that scare you. It's like a little, little slime boy. See, <laughs> I like the title of Dragon Quest because you can have a Dragon Quest eleven, but when you have a Final Fantasy eleven, Final Fantasy fourteen. Final Fantasy 15? Stop calling it Final Fantasy. It's not the final of anything. Do you know the story behind that name? Final Fantasy? Yeah. No. It was, it was, uh, it was like the director's last chance to make a game or he was going to have to like be fired because he's, oh, he would made a bunch of games that failed. So he made Final Fantasy. That was his last game that he was going to make and it became a hit. So he kept, kept it going. <laughs> I'm gonna re- so it makes a little sense in that regard, but, uh, yeah, it's not a Final Fantasy. They should have just called the sequel a new fantasy. <laughs> the fantasy continues. Final Fantasy again. <laughs> I just keep going from there. Final Fan- Fantasy twice. Fantasy again. <laughs> Your Fantasy Part Three with Clubber Lang. They should just they should just make Final Fantasy ellipses because it just keeps going and it'll never stop. It's like the same fantasy, but it's just continuous. Anyway, Dragon End- Quest. endless fantasy. Is endless what they fantasy. Call it. Uh, but Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah. Looks hype. The characters look cool. Especially the guy with the mustache. Right there at the the bottom. I don't know if you can see his mustache. You can't see his mustache. You can see the edge of his mustache. But you know he's going to be the guy. Yeah. He's going to be the guy you want. He's probably going to be the bad guy. He's going to be like the guy that becomes evil or something. I don't know. Nah, he's just... He's going to be the guy. He's like when everyone else is dead. When you got the blue haired um, Super Saiyan God over here. Blown into his... uh, His... um, His Dragon Zord Summoner. And then you got the dragon up in the corner. Takes a lot of things from Dragon Ball and Power Rangers all at the same time. Yeah, and that's and another thing that really gets me excited about these games is that it looks it, it's based on Akira Toriyama's art style, and it just reminds me of Dragon Ball. And I can just play a, a full JRPG campaign. Who who knows how many hours? Like 40, 60 yeah. hours, millions. Yeah, for of of a game styled after Dragon Ball's style, and probably Dragon Ball's sense of humor also, because Akira Toriyama is probably a uh, uh, executive director or something yeah yeah yeah. no it looks game. sweet actually um i'll see if there's any yeah that yeah with that you can't really tell but i mean they have that i would like it to be well i don't know what do you think of the, of the art style with this this sort of game I'd, I'd like it to stylize i actually prefer stylized games over realistic games mm-hmm. so whenever people are always asking for more rpgs that have just like the browns and yeah and like grays in the in the tone of the environment with people that just look like everybody else i don't really care too much about it but then you got these guys look at that that's that's straight up dragon ball enemy you would find in it oh like absolutely. A manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just kind that's, of running around you would definitely find that in like a drag in the dragon ball original dragon ball now would you prefer like the art style here because you it's kind of like they have like the cartoonish esque and then yeah. like the kind of realistic background would you prefer like a, a 2.5 d sort of style to this where like it's more cell shading if you will or do you like this style here uh, I, I like this I don't I don't I don't mind I wouldn't mind uh, seeing how a two point like a 2.5 d wouldn't be right it's like that'd be like a side yeah spread. I guess I threw but that off cell shading cell I, shading I, I do like cell shading but I I guess I'd have to see how it looks because right now what what I'm seeing from from the screens it uh, already looks amazing um yeah the last one that's had uh, the same sort of art style right you would say yeah uh well Dragon Quest X was like an MMO that only released in Japan mm. and 9 <clears throat> was on the DS so it 
Look at this. Look at. Sorry to cut you off. But look, look at this attack name. Eleven cats frizz. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, Eleven's like the the protagonist's name in this, and he casts oh. frizz. Frizz is the. Uh, oh, I, I didn't even read that right. <laughs> I said cats. It's casts. Yeah. Frizz. That makes more sense <laughs> than eleven cats frizz. Click that one up top. What's what's that one? This dude. What what is he? Is he wearing like a peacock? Looks like it. See, you can even change outfits to be amazing. <laughs> that's a better picture of it. That's that's gonna be my You're like a mariachi leading a mariachi band. This is there's another horse. This every is, every game this has is a horse. Straight up Android seventeen, right? Exactly, here. and Android seventeen was so dope in this in the super. It just it, it looks it looks great. Like different 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 uh, screenshots makes it look great. Different areas. Here's that old guy. That's probably gonna be a, end up being a creeper. <laughs> Grandpa Gohan. That's yeah. Grandpa. That's totally him, isn't it? It is. It looks like Grandpa Gohan. <laughs> nice. I think I've seen the opening cutscene. That screenshot. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about let this. Let me. Yeah. Let me know how this is when you when you get a chance to yeah. play it. I'm curious. I haven't played a Dragon Quest game. I I think I um. I want to say I played one for Super Nintendo. They were they, or they, Game Boy Advance. There was one for Game Boy Advance. I think. I think. I think they 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 uh, ported a lot of uh, SNES games onto yeah the Advance. So probably. But yeah, let us know if you guys are uh, interested in that. It looks sweet. I mean, look at this freaking picture. Hell yeah, that's that's the player character right there on the right, the dragon. Right there. That's me. Yeah, holding the uh, oh. Saruman's eyeball. <laughs> Okay, next. What's next? All right, we got... There we go. Darksiders 3, Apocalypse Edition. First of all, I'm not going to get the Apocalypse Edition because that's $400. That's crazy. I thought you said you were you got it. No, here's the story. Here's story I have a story for this. Uh, so around Prime Day, we were all excited for what Target was going to do because they announced they were going to have a big sale to counter the Prime Day. The biggest in all the land. And they weren't lying... But it was it was not meant to be. So what happened was they gave it a bunch of codes that weren't supposed to stack, and they stacked, <laughs> and they all stacked. And there was like a bunch of fifteen percent off codes, a bunch of twenty dollars off codes. Yeah, you could just keep using them, using them, using them. And I had like ten codes active or something, and so I just put I put in my cart, Dark Siders Three Apocalypse Edition, uh, Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu and Eevee, Anthem, uh, something else. A couple other things. And in the end, my, my total was like $200. Uh-huh. And that's basically, that basically means I got Darksiders 2 50% off and everything else free. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited. An hour later, they were like, cancel. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, excuse me. I guess I should have expected that, but it hurt. Yeah. But I like look at the Wario64's like tweets whenever he tweets about this event. And like in the comments, like I hope they don't cancel my pre-orders. I'm like, why are yours active and I mine was canceled? Maybe if maybe if like your total like you saved like eight hundred dollars, you're not allowed to keep your pre-order. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> probably if you uh, completely rob them. Yeah. So I should have just I should have I shouldn't have gotten this. I you should have gotten greedy. Is what you should have. I don't. I I saw. I could have. I shouldn't have gotten this. Now why I, is this four hundred dollars though? Yeah, well, it comes with four statues, that like how, poster in the background, how that big is wall this thing? scroll. I mean, based on the size that it's showing, because it's showing the disc in the background, so you're thinking about that big. So you're thinking maybe they're about that, maybe tw 12 inches? They're, inches? they're big inch. They're, it's, it's probably like 11 inches or something each. And I know the box is like really long. Mm. So it's it's a pretty big uh, investment. Of, yeah. And um, yeah. I never even planned on getting this, but I, was, I just, I just saw, I saw like dollar signs, <laughs> uh, and I, and I was, and I am interested in Dark Siders. It looks really cool. The Dark Siders. I have yet to play the first two. I haven't played the first two either. I just um, want Dark Siders. I have three. them though. I have them ready to go. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just playing catch up. It's what mm. I'm trying to do. It's just everything. There's everything on the horizon I need to play. And things in the background I just can't play. That'd be funny if, like, the whole industry was on the same page where, like, one year you would have new games come out. Then the next year, nothing. They call that the... <laughs> they call it the catch-up year. Yeah. Every gamer gets the catch-up. The catch gap up. year. The gap year. Every, so it's like, hey, and then, like, throughout the... They have, like, all these sales for games going on. Hmm. That'd be neat. Why don't you do that, people? Because they need to make money. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, uh, 
they're, right. they're like, we, we still can't sell anything, but we're in the red. <laughs> we need to pay. <laughs> so uh, this podcast, we're going to have to cut a little shorter. We're kind of running out of time. So we're just going to move on to a couple of things that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um, I mean, all, all these things that you talk about, I'm actually looking forward to as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it worked out great. Um, but first and foremost, this isn't coming out till next year early, but Resident Evil 2 remake. Like one of the things that I think of is like, hey, what are you looking forward to? Resident Evil 2 remake. Like hands down, I'm excited for this. It looks fantastic. Uh, I can't wait to play it. Uh, the trailer just blew me away. It wasn't what I was expecting. It was better than what I was expecting. I, even like, I don't know, some people might look at them like, yeah, no, it's just going to have greater graphics. We knew that. But it was just just the approach they took to it. And yeah. The, the, it's just, mm. sure, some people have issues with Leon. He doesn't look like the current Leon. You know, like the Leon. They kind of kept the model for Leon pretty close to what he was since 4. Yeah. But I mean, if you if you think about it, Leon from when they did Resident Evil Four, you know, he didn't really look that close to the guy, the original model in Resident Evil Two. It was close, but anyway, he looks a little bit different, sure. But whatever. Yeah, who cares? It's gonna be great. It's gonna be gritty. It's gonna be fucking Resident Evil Two. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to play it. Also, I haven't really played much uh, Resident Evil, and since this is like a remake of the one of the the best games in the series, I think. Yeah. Have you ever played it? I've never played it. Now, with Resident Evil 2, it was, it was uh, you had a A campaign and a B campaign for both Leon and Claire. Mm. So, uh, different events going on. And although both the stories intertwined, this time they're going to have a cam- just two campaigns, from what I understand. They're getting rid of the A and the B scenario, but they're still going to incorporate everything into the campaigns. So, it's going to be sweet. I'm excited. So, Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know what they're going to add to it as far, if there's going to be multiplayer or whatnot, but it's just, it's nice. It's interesting because the way the the Resident Evil looks, because they had Resident Evil that came out, like you would call it seven, mm-hmm. basically. Um, and that kind of reminds me of the uh, logo that they're using down there. But anyway, I'm excited for this. Uh, I'm sure every Resident Evil fan is as well. 